This episode of the BEC Bridge was recorded at Villa Ohana, a luxury villa located at Westmoreland Hills on the stunning West Coast. This property is included in Barbados Sotheby's International Realty's impeccable catalog of villas. Welcome to the BEC Bridge. On this episode, we are talking trending HR topics. The Great Resignation, Quiet Quitting. I'll explore those with Diana Douglas, HR professional. I'll also sit with the Chief Labor Officer as we discuss documents required around termination. And look out for our funny HR stories in this episode. Once again, join us as we build employment connections. Today I have with me Miss Diana Douglas. She is the first Vice President of the Barbados Employers Confederation, but a seasoned HR professional. Welcome, Diana. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Today we are going mm -hmm. to be talking about some new HR terms that have been popping up. Mm -hmm. Quiet quitting, employee centricity, you know, those terms that you're wondering just exactly what does that mean? Yeah. Quiet quitting, um, this new thing that popped up around the end of 2022. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you've heard about it. Tell yep. me your take on this quiet quitting phenomenon. I think it's just a new term on something that was around since Adam was a lad. Presenteeism mm -hmm. and they've probably had other terms for it before then. But it's, it's surely been around. I think it's probably just some, that name has just recently popped up. I think I can agree with you on that. Um, We've always tried to find a term to explain when persons come to work, but there's yeah. no discretionary effort. Mm -hmm. um, there's not that extra input to help the business thrive and succeed. They're just there. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, we know that that happens. Yes. So the BEC and Barbados Today teamed up and we did mm -hmm. a social media poll and asked, and asked the average Barbadian mm -hmm. what they thought quite quitting meant. And 32% said they thought it meant doing the bare minimum. So mm -hmm. just what we were talking about, right, you know? Right, which is correct. Yes. Presenteeism, you're yes. just doing the absolute, you're doing exactly what your job description yeah. requires you to do. Mm -hmm. Some said, um, up 28% said they're on the verge of quitting, meaning that mm -hmm. persons are considering leaving the organization. And 18% said that they're actually disengaged. So when they think about quite quitting, mm -hmm. they think the employee is disengaged and they've, they've checked out. Yes, yeah. which so is just, also quite, quite, that's probably just another phase of quite quitting, yes. Yes, so it's definitely not a, a new nonsense term. No. It's one of those things where persons are, they've resigned while they're working. Mm -hmm. That yes. is correct. Mm -hmm. I think when we think about that too, we have to think about what is the root cause behind it. It's not always because the employee does not want to work. The employee themselves, there are reasons behind that. And that is where we need to go. We'd have to look at that. That has to be the purview of management in general, not mm -hmm. just human resource professionals. Of course. Yes. So. And this brings up the thought really that sometimes it's a lack of communication or a lack of interest in the employees in the first place. And the employees know that. And they think, well, nobody really cares about me so, or what I do, so I'll just be here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that is something you would advise managers to be, to pay more attention to in terms of how they communicate with mm -hmm. their staff and let persons know that, you know, their role is important to the organization. Absolutely. But that mm -hmm. then puts another spin on it. Sometimes managers themselves need training as to how to um, communicate or even understand what it is that they're seeing rather than getting annoyed at what they're seeing to be able to drill down and they may not know how to do that. You know, this is a very interesting conversation, Diana. I mm -hmm. think persons assume that because you're a great employee, you will make a great manager. Mm -hmm. And they don't recognize some of the skills that are necessary in leadership and management. Yes. And communication is, doesn't come easily for everyone. And it's something that persons need training on. Mm -hmm. it's, it's one of the things we learn when we're communicating is, you say so much more with your body language and your tone absolutely. versus the actual words that <laughs> yes, you use. Absolutely. So yes. people know, people can look at you and say and see when you say, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to see you, that you're really, I'm not really happy to see you. Um, but you're right. The, our managers do need to be able to be trained 
um, and rather than dropping square pegs in round holes, train them before we put them in that posi position because it's not fair to the manager, then it's not fair to the employee and overall it's not fair to the business because productivity suffers. So I think that's a great segue to the new term, employee centricity. Yes. You know, it's not the easiest word to call, mm -hmm. but that is the newest thing that I'm hearing, employee centricity. And of course, I had to, you know, go on the internet and Google it. Mm -hmm. And I found employeecentricity.com. And we have a book by Dr. Jack Wiley, Employee Centric Manager. Mm -hmm. And what he's presenting is that there are some useful tips to guide managers and leaders in terms of how they manage their employees. And he's a psychologist and a researcher. So he's written this based on oh, 30 years of research yeah. into management and leadership. But sometimes you hear these terms like, okay, employee centricity is all about looking at the employees and what they need as opposed to looking at what the business needs. And it seems like this utopian fairy mm -hmm. tale world that does not exist. Tell me, tell me your thoughts on it. I don't think we should divide the two. I think it should, they, they should be looked at parallel. Mm -hmm. um, if you look at what the employee needs are and what the company needs and try to marry the two, I think then it is more company centric. So rather than just the employee centricity, let's have everything come together. Um, so companies have values, their stated values, they put them up on their walls. But employees, they have their values, especially since COVID. Um, a lot of employees have become, their values are more based on family. That's very true. And, uh, you know, so this impacts, they would, they would put their family first, which they should, um, over the company. But is there a way to be able to marry the two? And that is company centricity where everybody's values are taken into consideration. And you're right, you know, companies need employees, employees need companies as well. Absolutely. One of my things that I constantly say, only successful businesses employ persons. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. it, and persons want employment so they can, so they can earn a living. So yes. you need to find that marriage of the company's success and the individual also thriving and succeeding as well. Yeah. So you have given us a new phrase or new <laughs> word, company centricity. centricity. <laughs> so we're all pulling together and going yes. towards that, that goal. We should try, yes. Mm -hmm. And, you know, last, the last thing, it's not a phrase, but it's a phenomenon we definitely saw happening overseas, mm -hmm. um, being coined the great resignation. Yes. And you mm -hmm. mentioned how a person's values change coming out of COVID. Mm -hmm. And we know the great resignation, as it's dubbed, yeah. came out of the height of COVID. Mm -hmm. And as, um, you know, major metropolitan countries, especially the U.S., looked towards their recovery from COVID, they saw this mass resignation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think most persons think that that is a U.S. thing mm -hmm. or maybe a U.S. and Canada thing and not necessarily here in the Caribbean. Tell me what you have been observing in HR circles having to do interviews and recruit, etc. Yeah. Are you seeing that happening here on the ground? Not from the standpoint of great resignation, but there is a quiet resignation mm -hmm. um, in Barbados where People, some people have gotten to the point where, look, I just can't take this stress anymore and have resigned. And I've seen that a lot over the past maybe two, three, four months where people have left their jobs, they've resigned without having a job to go to because the stress is too much for them, their pressure is too high, they have no work-life balance and they feel that they, um, it's just not, it's not the environment for them, yeah. So persons are definitely pursuing a better work-life balance. And Absolutely, if the organization yeah. is not providing that, they're willing to walk away. They're willing to walk away, yeah. Even without having secured another job. Yes, yeah, yeah. Well, we, once again, we did the poll and asked mm -hmm. persons, you know, what do they think if it's only a U.S. phenomenon? Mm -hmm. And 55% said it was worldwide, worldwide and included Barbados. Mm -hmm. Um, only 32% thought that it was a phenomenon of only the U.S. and, and Canada, only a North American phenomenon. Yeah. So I think that kind of mirrors what your experience um, is saying to mm -hmm. us, that the Barbadian worker 
depending on, you know, of course it's personal situations as well, mm -hmm. but persons are willing to walk away from an environment that does not um, meet their core values or doesn't serve them. Yeah, and, and the thing about it is it might not be the great resignation, but it might be the great wish to resign because there's still a lot of people out there that wish that they could be somewhere doing something else. And maybe this is a time for people really to think about where they want to go in life. And uh, I mean, one of the tools that employees can use for themselves, they don't have to wait for their employer to do it, but they can do a self-assessment. They can do a get a psychometric assessment of themselves done to see where they really fit, what are their interests and where they should go. Then the next thing would be for them to take the risk and bite the bullet and head in that direction. And I think that is all, always scary for some person. Mm -hmm. But psychometric um, assessments are actually very useful. They are. It's amazing how mm -hmm. they come and show you things that... You if you're honest when you do the psychometric assessment, don't pretend to be somebody else. Just be honest, answer the questions honestly, and the results at the end mirror image of you. Mm -hmm. And we live in a time where persons do have a lot of income earning potential mm -hmm. in different industries and in, in new jobs that are being created given how technology has expanded mm -hmm. um, and therefore there's a lot more potential out there yeah. for uh, income earning opportunities. And I use that as opposed to jobs yes. because it could be a job, it could be a business that you start on your own, it could mm -hmm. be you're working from someone working for someone in another country because there's remote work. Yes. So there, there are those opportunities that, available. Th those opportunities are increasing. Okay. Yeah. So as we come to wrap up our, our time together, mm -hmm. I mean, we touched on those three things, the great resignation, employee centricity, and quiet quitting. Is there any takeaway, any last words that you want to share with persons, with our viewers? I think that even though we looked at those three things, and they seem to focus a lot on the employees, that really and truly the challenges in the workplace, it's a joint, it needs to be a joint remedy. You have to look at the causes, not necessarily what the symptoms and the end result, which means that employers and employees need to sit together and figure out, well, what's going on? And this might mean that employees, employers have to actually share the strat their business strategy with their employees, don't just say that there is one, but sh share it with them so that they can see where they fit in because so that way they can actually, they have something to work together on and um, make it a common purpose and not just one or the other. Well, thank you so much, Diana. I would say, you. you know, what you just shared, the key there is communication and honest and open communication exactly. between mm -hmm. both parties. So. Yeah. You know, one hand can't clap, so you need both the employer and the employee to come to the table mm -hmm. and have that open and honest communication, mm -hmm. you know, and so that they can then push the business forward. I think everyone would reap that success. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. And thank you so much. <laughs> okay. Melissa. <laughs> Hi, Sheila. Nothing surprises us when it comes to dealing with people and working in HR. And I know you have some funny stories to share with us today. Um, my, my task today, Sheena, is to get through my stories without bursting, having an outburst. And I don't know if that's gonna be possible because after you hear these stories, Sheena, I don't think you're gonna sit there with a straight face. I will try. You wanna hear the first one? Let's go. <laughs> okay. So you have an employee who was terminated. The employee was terminated for their conduct what we would consider gross misconduct. So the employee was probably fighting or something like that on the job. And pending determination, the employee then decided to appeal the decision as that's their right, you know? And probably after 10 or 12 days or so, the employee appealed on the basis that the employer did not reach out to them after they fight to see how they were doing. No. After they were terminated. <laughs> no. It's yes, like true story. Okay, so having heard that story, what would you advise the, the employer? Or what would you advise the employee in this situation? To, I, I, would, I would advise the employee to, you know, make, ensure that they are familiar with what the company's policies are as it relates to the disciplinary procedures. Because yes, it is your right, but it, 
could have been she, you know, just to be fair, it could have been that as we were speaking about it just now, that they were not familiar with what the appeal process really was. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when you say A, you have to say B. So through all of that, though, I would implore everybody, all employees, to familiarize themselves with the company's code of discipline and their protocols, you know, going through. That's, that's going to make the process so much more easier. And we know that the appeal process is usually in that termination letter. So just yes. reference your documents so you know what you have to do. Yes. Yes. Okay. You have another story for me? I saved the best one for the last one. Okay. <laughs> um. <laughs> I don't know where to start, Sheena. But um, we had an employee that, you know, they called their manager and they said to their manager, you know, I have a, I have a present for you when you, on your, on your arrival at work, I left a present for you. Oh. Yeah. You feel that excited, right? Yes. <laughs> Present for me, ooh, excited. So when the, when the manager got to work, the present was actually the employee's resignation letter that was slid under the door. <laughs> like, now, we would want to advise employees, do not do things like that. Um, you, you should follow proper business procedure yes. if you are resigning um you need to keep your professional integrity intact through yes. the entire employment yes. experience and more often than not the handbook or the contract outlines the procedures you know the, the minimum period of notice that you should give your employer especially if you have to consider a handover or anything like that that you may need to do you know that's the courteous thing to do okay <laughs> thank you so much melissa you know we always get funny stories yes. so we always have a moment to laugh, but yes. there's always something, some learning point, something that someone didn't know, and therefore we're sharing those little nuggets with persons today. Definitely. Today, as we look at a spotlight on employment law, I have with me the Chief Labour Officer, Mrs. Claudette Hope Greenwich. Thank you for joining me this afternoon. You're most welcome, Sheena. We've been having some conversation around some trending HR terms, great resignation, quiet quitting, and you know today our discussion can be around termination and those documents that are required by employers when an employee leaves an organization. So can you share with us what is legally required? Okay, the employer-employee relationship unfortunately comes to an end at some point either through resignation um, or for other reasons. And there are some documents that employers must provide their employees with and vice versa. So if you go with the employers first, the employer is required to produce for the employee something called the Certificate of Employment. We're not going in any particular order, but the Certificate of Employment record. And that is a document which is including the employer's name and address, the employee's name and address, and the, the length of time the employee was with the particular employer and the particular job the person was doing at the time of termination or at the time the employment came to an end. The reason for the termination does not go on the certificate unless the employee asks to have that included. And that must be delivered to the employee um, within 14 days of his ending the employment, but it is good to do that forthwith when you're handing over the other things that are due to the employee as well. And I know that that certificate of employment record, I mean, the ERA, the Employment Rights Act, requires mm -hmm. that each employee gets that when they leave an organization. Right, that's, that's correct. The okay. ERA does require that. That is one of the stipulations, and that is something that must be followed. And I, I can add that the BEC has a template available for persons who might need it. But as you indicated, the areas that must be included, so mm -hmm. there's certain information that wants mm -hmm. to include that, that's fine. Yeah, that's correct. Now, one of the forms that persons regularly ask about or they know about is that green form. Mm -hmm. um, the green form that is an actual national insurance form. So no, it doesn't fall under the purview of the Labor yeah. Department. Yes. But you would be in a position to share when and if that is required for employers to issue. The green form, as it is familiarly referred to, 
is a form that you hand over to an employee, that the employer hands over to the employee in the instance of termination and also layoff. So it is one form. Um, in the case where it is being used to address a, a, a termination situation, it is extremely important. I mean, it, it is in any case, but it's extremely important the employee gets that form. And it is best that the employee gets that form on the day that he or she is leaving. That form is an entitlement. And it provides the employee with a document that he or she takes to the National Insurance Department. And at that point, um, in association with the NIS, and the information from the employer on that form and the interview process that the employee goes through, a former employee, the determination as to whether that employee is entitled to a benefit, um, be it unemployment in this case, then that form is used to help make that determination. And I wouldn't say often is the case, but there are instances where the form is not provided and it affects the employee's access to what is his or her entitlement. So we would definitely have to encourage employers to issue that documentation immediately. Mm -hmm. But I wanna add another twist to it because at the BEC I normally get questions about if an employer mm -hmm. has to issue a green form to someone if they've resigned. And so some of these persons are of the viewpoint that if you resign, then I don't need to give you a green form. Right, without going too much into the, the NIS course of action, and I'm sure that they will, you know, have an opportunity to, to represent um, these forms and these procedures. But the employee, as soon as he is leaving or indicates that he is leaving and it, it, it looks definite or it becomes definite, then action must be taken to, to have that form prepared and handed over. Whether that person um, ended the employment due to resignation or some other reason for termination, but it is an entitlement as long as you are no longer with the particular employee, employer. I, I fully mm -hmm. agree with you, and our advice is, if it's a resignation, simply state that as the reason for the employee mm -hmm. leaving and on the form, but they're entitled mm -hmm. to it, so mm -hmm. issue the form as is required. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right, and the last area that I wanna highlight and have some discussion with mm -hmm. you on has to do with notice periods. So I know that under the Employment Rights Act, mm -hmm. it outlines notice periods that are required by either party if they're leaving the organization. Mm -hmm. But I do receive questions from employers asking about situations where employees don't give notice. So how should an employer handle such a situation? Okay, under the ERA, notice is properly accounted for. And it puts um, duties for the employer and for the employee. Now, just as the employer is expected to give notice, depending on the, the, the person's pay period and, and um, years of experience of with service. the company and length of service, mm -hmm. the employee is required to do a similar thing under the Employment Rights Act. It's the law. So an employee effectively, based on how he's paid, which is a simple way of looking at it. So you're paid um, weekly, daily, hourly you should give one week's notice. You're paid every two weeks, you give two weeks notice. Um, you're paid monthly, there's one month notice. But for the detail, the persons are encouraged to go to section 22 of the ERA because then there are some other conditions that need to be met. Nothing onerous, nothing difficult. But it is simply that um, in the same way that one party is required to give notice, then the other must live up to his or her end of the bargain. And it is a matter of not just following the law, but being courteous and treating each other employer to employee or former employer to employee with respect that is due to any person. Now, we mm -hmm. unfortunately are out of time, and mm -hmm. I know we can spend an entire day talking about requirements of the legislation, mm -hmm. etc. So as we move to, to wrap up, if there's any one last thought you want to mm -hmm. share with listeners and viewers? Okay, resignation is something that comes in, the, in, in a person's work life for various reasons, as we have said. The Employment Rights Act gives good guidance on, on what you should do, and those um, areas where there may be some uncertainty, 
you can of course turn to the Labor Department to, to get that guidance. Then there are the employers, employees' representatives, such as the BEC as the employees' representatives to, to give advice. All right, yeah. so when unsure, ask, ask for help. Certainly, and, and help is available. Yes, I, mm -hmm. I do support that. As you said, persons who have queries, they can reach out to the Labor Department. If you're an employer, you have the BEC. Mm -hmm. If you're a worker, you would have your trade union representatives yeah. to mm -hmm. give you some advice and guidance. Right. Thank right. you so much for having this chat with me today. You're most welcome. The Employment Rights Act is about 12 years old. And over the years, the BEC has made various submissions on behalf of the business community. Practitioners of industrial relations and human resources knew that the act was not without fault. And therefore, we've made suggestions on a wide array of topics. But one of them looks at the threshold for the six feet consultancy required for redundancy. We believe that this is not, this should not be required where there's a single employee being made redundant. On March 29th, the BEC will be hosting a symposium titled People, Pay and Economic Progress. Here we will delve into the topic of employment relations and how that enhances or hinders business within Barbados. If you want to join us for that conversation, just log into barbadosemployers.com where you can find more information. I have Sharissa here with me, and Sharissa, you're going to share what's happening in March. Sure, Gina. Coming up in March, I'm gonna highlight three sessions that we have. So on March 15th, we're going to be doing a review and analysis of tribunal cases, which will actually be delivered by our very own executive director. <laughs> um, on March 21st, we have performance management, and on the 23rd, we're going to be having the first of two sessions on conducting discipline. For more information, go to barbadosemployers.com. Under the events pane, select calendar, browse through, and register for any of the three sessions highlighted. Let me express gratitude to my guests for joining us and sharing their knowledge and expertise. You will want to tune in next month as we explore contracts. We will be talking contracts of service versus a contract for service. Fixed term contracts, short term contracts. We will explore all of those in our next episode. Until then, continue to build your employment relationships via the BEC Bridge.